Hey everybody, I'm super happy to be here. Uh, this is my first Sweet Builder House and it's been uh, amazing to be able to meet and connect with all of you. So, my name is Jack, also known as Vibes by some of you, and today I'm going to be representing Sec3 to talk to you guys about a very hot topic lately, which is uh, ChatGPT and large language models, specifically how it relates to security. So, can it help you with your development process and bug planning? Uh, let's find out. So before we, get, uh, we begin, allow me to take a little bit of a step back and kind of introduce Sec3 a little bit. So Sec3 is a security research and auditing company that takes our learnings from our specific security domain knowledge and we build them into automated security tools. So our company rolls deep. We've got top level CTF players that have been at every DEF CON final since 2017. And we also have contributors and maintainers uh, on core move components, uh, such as the Z3 SMT solver, which is also used by the move prover. So we take what I like to call a holistic approach to security, meaning we try to provide security services, services at all different stages of the project's life cycle. So we have X-Ray, which is a static analysis tool for pre-deployment, and obviously we provide expert launch audits, which make sure your projects are secure before maintenance launch. We also have Watchtower and Circuit Breaker, which, for, which is for post-deployment on-chain monitoring. So let's actually talk about the topic at hand today, which is using ChatGPT and perhaps other similar, similar LLMs for Web3 security. So while the advances of technology such as GPT has been amazing, in a domain-specific industry, such as security, the, these technologies are currently only complementary tools, but not really replacements for manual audits. So what are the model-related challenges to using ChatGPT for security? So first of all, there simply isn't enough data points to, find, uh, to help you find bugs in the model. By this I mean there simply isn't enough high quality tag transactions in order for the model to be trained properly. Um, but this actually opens up an opportunity for us to work together with data analytics company um, for, for creating, the, uh, creating these tag transactions. Second, it's also very expensive to train these models. Uh, and third, running the models on the same input multiple times may give different results, which raises the questions of reliability. So, what are the functionality related challenges? Um, large language models are generally not good at handling long inputs, and some smart contracts may be very long, which can sometimes lead to memory corruption, even if you try to feed the model code through multiple prompts. So additionally, most critical issues found in manual code audits are logic errors, unlike simple bugs that can be captured by patterns that are hard for large language models. So the question is, is ChatGP and other LLMs good enough to replace auditors right now? I'd say the answer to that is still currently a resounding no, but much more neat research needs to be done and things change very quickly. All right, all right. so I've hit you with enough of the bad stuff. Now let's dig into a little bit of the good stuff. What can you use ChatGP for? So, even though ChatGPT is not completely ready for smart contract auditing, it can still be a very nice and productive tool for developers. So for example, it could be used to explain what the program is doing and why a bug happens. It can also be used for things like auto-completion um, so that developers can finish coding tasks faster and it can even generate a working program. So besides that though, um, ChatGPT can be especially useful when it comes to tests and move spec generation. So let's try to understand a little bit on why this is even interesting in the first place and why it's important. Because writing program tests is actually quite tedious and time consuming. They can be repetitive while requiring developers to carefully think about possible scenarios the program can fail. So developers usually have a tight schedule to deliver, and they may not have enough time to prepare tests that sufficiently cover the most interesting scenarios. 
Therefore, it would be super useful if there is a tool that can understand the basic behavior of the program and generate working tests or even templates that are easy to work with and easy to extend. So this is even more important for move specs. Developers have to write them in the move specification language, which is a new language for most developers. So based on our experience, many projects do not have sufficient specs. Um, this is also observed in the audits done by other security firms. They usually kind of recommend more specs in the report. All right, so before we start looking at the actual concrete examples of the tests and specs generated by ChatGPT, let's briefly compare the differences of unit tests, product tests, uh, property tests, and move specifications. So unit tests generally exist in programs written in any language, not just move, and basically developers specify some concrete example um, and check if the corresponding outputs satisfy some properties. So, for example, the input should be 10 and the output should be zero. Property tests, on the other hand, are similar to fuzzing, where the inputs are randomly selected from a range specified by developers. So, the outputs are similarly checked against some property, um, and in both of unit tests and property tests, will execute the program. However, the difference is that inputs of prop tests are randomly selected from the range and based on the provided inputs. And because of this, interesting inputs that can potentially expose bugs may not be selected for execution. So as a result of this, both of them may miss bugs if you don't really know like what you're looking for. So on the contrary though, Move specs are for formal ver verification. So developers need to precisely define the program behaviors and the exe expected outcomes, which is written in move specification language and provided to the prover. And then the move prover will systematically and mathematically check all possible scenarios and see if there are any violations. So as a result of this, even though it's harder to write correct move specs, once proved, it can guarantee the completeness. So this goes to show just how much more powerful a tool move specs are versus the unit tests and property tests. All right, so now that we've gone over what the tests are and how it works, now let's look at some concrete examples. For this example, we will ask ChatGPT to generate first the unit test, Second, a property test. And then third, a set of move specs for this simple buggy move program. So the goal of this particular exercise is to first see how good these gener generated artifacts are, and two, if they can actually discover the bug which we know exists within this program. Knowing where the bug is and testing it against tools like this is always a good starting point to see how effective the tools actually are. All right, so the, this program has one function and one function only, which is used to calculate the fees that should be paid to the protocol. The parameters are the amount and the before and after prices. It first calculates the profit, then based on the profit, it calculates the fee. So the fee calculation step in the red box suffers from a rounding error which leads to a fee bypass, meaning the protocol doesn't actually get paid when it's supposed to. So when profit is larger than zero, but the amount times profit is smaller than 10K, the fee will be zero due to this rounding error. So we kind of already know what's going on here. As shown in the figure on the left, we feed the program into ChatGPT, and then we ask it to generate a unit test for this function. The result is shown on the figure on the right. So the generated test select three sets of numbers to test the scenario when one, the profit is smaller than zero, two, the profit equals to zero, and then three, when the profit is larger than zero. 
So as we know, ChatGPT is not really good at math. So some numbers and some of the comments are incorrect. However, the generated testing framework is easy to understand and work with. So while this is a good start to a framework for doing some unit testing, the selected three sets of testing inputs did not end up exposing the rounding issue. All right, now let's look at the second type of testing, which is the property test. We did the same thing here, which is feeding ChatGPT with the simple program, and then asking it to provide a framework for property tests. So as far as we know, there's no property test framework on Move, although we believe someone may build it very soon. So to demonstrate the idea, we implement the same function in Rust, and then we feed it to ChatGPT. The generated um, property test is shown on the right. All right, so here shows some details of the generated property tests. As highlighted in the green box there, the range of the three parameters are zero to the max number that can be represented by an unsigned 64-bit integer. It also provided some assertions too, which is pretty great. Again, it's not perfect. The formula of the expected fee is incorrect, but correcting it is fairly easy. So this actually gave us a decent property test template, which makes it pretty easy to extend to. However, because property tests is basically an enhanced version of unit tests, by design, it may not select interesting inputs to run the tests, that, and thus, it may miss the bug, too. It might get lucky, though, but the chance of that happening is fairly low and not something that you can really depend on. All right, so let's see how ChatGPT performs uh, in terms of move specs generation. So even though the move specification language is relatively new, ChatGPT already does a pretty good job. We simply feed the program and ask it to generate the move spec. The out-of-the-box result has several assertions and is already working. This can also serve as a template if developers want to add more requirements or constraints. So we made some minor changes to the specs generated by ChatGPT, and then additionally included, included the requirements that the amount must be larger than zero. After that, we invoke the prover, and the prover will convert the specs into math mathematical constraints and systematically check if the requirements are true for all possible scenarios. So in this way, we're actually able to discover the rounding issue. So looking ahead, we're, we're, we're very excited about the prospects of large language models and how, how it can apply to Web3 and blockchain use cases. This is why we have built and released OWL, the first open source Web3 specific lar large language model. The reason why we built OWL from scratch instead of fine tuning current models is that first, blockchain transactions are not included in the training data of these LLMs. And treating transactions such as text doesn't really reflect the unique characteristics of blockchain transactions. Large language models are also generally models for many tasks, so that they're huge, which requires much more data to be able to fine tune. So we, the foundational model that we open source for OWL is chain agnostic from day one. And while it's currently only trained on Ethereum transactions, because that's where we were able to find the highest quality large data set to train on, we're actively looking for data providers and analytics company that can help us bring these capabilities over to Suite. So, what are the key takeaways? So far, we use ChatGPT to generate three types of artifacts that are useful for quality control. It demonstrated some capacity to understand the program and the desired behavior, and although these sometimes have issues, they're generally easy to fix and extend. The innovation of large language models is currently growing at an exponential rate, so it's very possible that if we're having these same discussions again a year from now, things actually might, might be completely different. But for now, more research is needed before we can fully rely on it for doing security auditing. Let's say we score one for the humans. So working on top of these generated templates, 
is already much easier than writing them from scratch. So as long as you understand the limitations of each framework and lean more heavily on writing good move specs, you will end up with safer and more secure code while using these tools. All right, so once again, my name is Jack, um, and I hope this talk was informative and educational for you guys. If you guys have any questions or security needs, feel free to add me on Twitter or Telegram, or just find me afterwards. Uh, we'll be more than happy to help. Thanks. <laughs>